Okay, so I'm Alex Thomas, I'm one of the lecturers here in uh, Geosciences and I'll be taking uh, you for some of the chemical oceanography parts of this course. So I thought I'd uh, just give you this brief introduction to some of the properties of water before we start the lectures proper. So this is kind of stuff you're going to need to know for the first lecture. So please watch the rest of the video. Um, so this is a, a presentation about the properties of, of water. Uh, just to get to the next slide here. So, um, so water is made up of, uh, of hydrogen and oxygen. Uh, two atoms of hydrogen, one of oxygen. I'll just give myself, uh, to give myself some kind of pointer. Uh, okay, so we've got a hydrogen atom. In fact, we've got two hydrogen atoms, which make a, a nucleus of one proton and uh, an electron orbiting that. Uh, and we uh, bond two of those with um, an oxygen atom. Again, the oxygen atom has more electrons going around it in, in different orbitals. Okay, and those combine together to give you a molecule that looks something like this. Okay, with an oxygen with two hydrogens bonded to it. Okay, just before we kind of move on and do kind of like the, the real stuff, I just thought I'd point out that uh, the electrons orbiting those um, uh, electrons orbiting those things are not uh, really going round in circles. Okay, they're much more likely. Well, they are more likely. Instead, of these are the probabilities of where electrons in d those different shells actually are. So some kind of actually, so some actually do go round in. What, has to be nearly circular orbits, uh, but the others are much, much more complex. Okay, but this is stuff you don't need to worry about. But just, just to point out that those kind of simplified atomic models, where everything's going around a circle, is not so good. Okay. Um, so looking on uh, on to now, looking at the, uh, uh, the the water molecule in itself. So the hydrogen atom. Here and the the oxygen atom, oh, I'll just get rid of just get rid of my face. The hydrogen atom and the oxygen atom here are, are covalently bonded to each other, so they're sharing electrons. So the hydrogen uh, did have one electron going around it, but now its its kind of outer electron shell is full because it has two electrons because it's sharing one of its electrons and sharing one of the oxygen's electrons with it over here and likewise it's sharing over here and this fills up the electron orbital of oxygen so that now has eight in its outer shell which is kind of where that particular orbital wants to be um, so this forms quite a strong covalent bond between the two um, atoms okay so that the next thing to point out really though is that um, it's not just that covalent bonding that goes on with water. Because if you look at what happens to the overall charge of the molecule, now because we've got uh, both of the electrons within the, the, around the hydrogen atom are actually kind of always skewed over to one side now because they're being shared with the oxygen. And because the nucleus of the, the hydrogen is positive, that gives this side of this hydrogen atom a kind of a positive charge. A small positive charge, it's not one whole charge, but it, it's a small positive charge. Likewise, over on this side, these electrons are being drawn away from the outer side of the, the hydrogen, so that's a positive charge. And we end up with negative charges over this side, where we've got these pairs of electrons that are kind of grouped together on the other side of the, um, of the, of the molecule. So we, we end up with a kind of one negative charge on one side of the water molecule and the other side of the water molecule, or at least the, the two hydrogens that are sticking out of it, are slightly positively charged. And this is really significant for the chemistry of water. Because these small charges on the kind of like the oxygen side and the hydrogen side, these small positive and negative charges, these tend, well these, these do, attract each other. Okay, so we have what are kind of like small ionic bonds, kind of driven by charge, between water molecules. Okay, so these are called hydrogen bonds, and they're kind of approximately a tenth of the strength of a of a intramolecular bond. Okay, so these are intermolecular bonds, so they're going between molecules, and these uh, these bonds between molecules have really profound impacts on the physical and chemical properties of water. And we'll go over this a lot more in the lecture. But just to give you a flavour, um, one of the interesting properties of water is that when it freezes, it actually gets less dense uh, than the liquid uh, that it froze from, which is kind of almost unique uh, 
Uh, almost all other substances are densest when they're a solid, then they're kind of slightly less dense when they're liquid, and they're the least dense when they're gases. Whereas water, its most dense phase is water, okay, it's liquid water. So this is kind of, we've got water, we've got ice in the water, and when we've got liquid, all of the, the, the molecules are kind of jumbled up and they kind of like fit together quite neatly, or they fit together quite densely. But when ice forms, the hydrogen bonds kind of seem to hold the water molecules apart into a kind of a less dense but more ordered structure. Okay, so that means that the water can float, sorry, ice can float on water, which is kind of interesting, but also very important for determining kind of what happens with the climate of the Earth, the cycle and processes within the ocean. Another interesting property is that water has a really high heat capacity compared to other substances with similar molecular weights. And this is also partly due to the hydrogen bonding, okay, because the, those hydrogen bonds can vibrate, okay, and, and, and allow the, the molecules to kind of shake around. Um, and that bond vibration absorbs energy. So when, you're, when you heat, when you, when you add heat to water, some of that heat goes into the kind of the molecular vibrations, some of it goes to the, the, the um, water molecules moving around more, but some of it goes into kind of vibrating those hydrogen bonds, which allows it to have that little bit of extra heat capacity, which is important because having a high heat capacity, which means it kind of moderates the temperature of the water, which kind of then moderates the climate a little bit, but also allows the ocean to act as a, as a really effective transporter of heat around the world, okay? which is a really important part of oceanography. Um, moving on again, another really, really important part way uh, that uh, water behaves is that it has really high bo boiling and melting points compared to other um, other molecules of, or compounds of, of similar molecular weight. So uh, it has a really high boiling point, 100 degrees Celsius, has a really high um, melting point of 0 degrees Celsius. So other compounds have much lower melting points. So, um, so this allows them to stay, have liquid water present at the Earth's surface, which is important for the existence of life and all kinds of other um, biochemical processes. Um, but it's not just that they've got a high temperature, there's a wide range of temperature in between the uh, melting and boiling point of water. And again, this is due to these hydrogen bonds. And we'll go over this a little bit more in the lecture. So that's, uh, that's it for the, the, this video. Um, I'll just bring me up uh, in this top right here. So this is, uh, this is just a, a, a nice uh, molecular diagram of one of the, the structures of water. Um, when it's frozen and you can kind of see that these, these, these individual molecules are being kind of like held in place um, by some kind of force that's acting between the molecules and that's the hydrogen bond. Um, so before we... Uh, um, is it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, let's, let's say it is. Um, so watch the video. Well, you've already watched the video. Um, um, and we'll take these concepts a little bit further in the lecture. Okay? So... Thank you for watching.